At her house, we found Maria resting peacefully on her mat, along with her daughter, who was also a shaman. They both greeted us with open arms, and I just stood in astonishment of this short, middle-aged Mexican woman who had such a spirituality in her presence. Alan and I nervously showed Maria and her daughter our mushrooms and asked if they would serve us that night. And after a moment, she happily agreed. A little after eight o'clock, Alan and I, along with 20 other men and women, gathered at Philmon's place, where he and his wife immediately became host. As we were being served warm chocolate to drink, I recalled the words of an early Spanish writer who described a similar setting before a mushroom ritual, and the gravity of what was before me started to hit my body. Around 10.30 or so, Maria started to clean the dirt from the mushrooms, and she began passing them through this rising incense smoke from the floor. As she sat on her mat before her religious adornments, Maria tenderly separated the sacred spores, reserving 13 pair for herself and her daughter, and handing out six pair to everyone else in the room. I honestly couldn't believe my eyes at this moment, for this was the culmination of years of pursuit. Alan's emotions, on the other hand, were very mixed. You see, before we had left the States, his wife had drafted up a promise note that detailed how Alan wouldn't let any of those nasty toadstools anywhere near his lips. Well, upon our first bites of the disgusting tasting mushroom, I heard Alan mutter under his voice, My God, what would Mary say? Time passed before Senora Sabina broke a flower from her altar bouquet and put out the last remaining flame in the room. For half an hour, the room sat in silent darkness. Alan, who was wrapped up in his blanket at this point, leaned over and whispered, Gordy, I'm seeing things. I looked him in his eyes and replied, don't worry, I am too. You see, my visions were emerging from the center of field of vision, opening up as they came, vivid in clarity and color and always harmonious. They would begin with art motifs such as decorative carpets or wallpapers before evolving into beautiful courts and arcades and gardens and even palaces. It was as though the walls of the house had dissolved and my spirit had flown forth and was suspended in mid-air, viewing the beauty of the treacherous mountains that we scaled to get to this very house. These visions were so intricate with lines and colors so sharply and focused that they seemed more real than anything I had seen before. I felt that only now I could see the archetypes, platonic ideas, and underlying imperfectness of our American everyday life. These reflections of mine passed through my head at the very moment I was seeing the visions. It was like the rational side of my brain was continuously trying to reason with the sensational side, almost as if I was split in half. It was at that moment I realized that my mind was only attached by the elastic cord of our vagrant senses. Throughout the night, our Senora Simacha and her daughter were highly active. After consuming double the amount of mushrooms that she had given the room, Alan and I could sense Maria's arms moving rhythmically throughout the darkness. Sometime later, her low, disconnected humming transformed into disconnected phrases, then articulate syllables. And finally, our Sierra came forth with a full body cantilena, almost as if it was ancient music coming straight from her voice. As her daughter joined in song, Maria stood up in an open space and began to dance and sing with an indescribably tender and poetic words of her native language. She followed these words with claps so resonant and true that Alan and I truly believe that she had to set some sort of device that gave her clap such a different pitch and tone.
the Coriander de Suprema herself. Perhaps her beauty was partly induced by the mushrooms, but to all the native Indians in the room, they would tell you that she was speaking God's words. And despite my beliefs, I knew for certain that she was the oracle that was standing before me, and I was spellbound. <laughs> Towards the end of the night, Alan and I laid on the floor mats, trying to scribble notes, but our bodies had laid inert. They were heavy as lead. We exchanged and whispered comments while our senses floated free in space, our spirits surveying the landscapes of ineffable beauty. Alan and I fell asleep around four o'clock and woke up around six to join the still awakened Oracle for some very nice coffee and bread. We then took our leave from Phil Mont's house, both agreeing that our heads were as clear as ever, but couldn't help but to be deeply shaken by our experience. Six days after Alan and I's experience, Valentina and my 16 year old daughter would eat the divine mushroom in their sleeping bags away from the coriander. The whole night my wife would stare off into the night, seeing that she could see the palaces of Versailles so clearly. After Valentina had sobered up, we discussed what the hallucinogenic status had meant for the timeline of man. For these toadstools were a natural product that were found on every continent. And at some point, they would have been discovered and eaten by our most primitive ancestors. As I see it, this could have only been the most profound detonator of new ideas, emotions, and reinforcement of miraculous sensation for those primitive beings. Valentina, Allen, and myself were so emboldened at that point as to whether or ask ourselves if mushrooms had actually planted the idea of God himself in man. After that stay, we returned to the States and decided to follow up with more trips to Mexico to gain more and more knowledge of the divine toadstool. Yet all the knowledge that we incurred just brought on more questions. It became obvious that Valentina, Alan, and myself needed a better team of anthropologists, of which there were relatively few. Yet in 1956, we somehow had recruited the world-renowned professor Roger Heim and actually had gotten in touch with a chemist from Delaware by the name of James Moore. With this new team assembled, our goal was to identify and command a steady supply of these hallucinogenic mushrooms for research, but we soon found that that was actually a lot harder than what we had expected. Through multiple expeditions into the dangerous remote mountains of southern Mexico, we learned of seven different corianders, seemingly coordinated with seven different types of hallucinogenic toadstools found about in that region. We also learned on these expensive expeditions that even if the rainy season has set, that these mushrooms may not even grow. So some of our trips, we end up coming back empty handed. Little by little, the properties of the divine mushroom were beginning to emerge. And these were the few things that we deemed true. Number one, users do not become addicts and each variant has its own hallucinogenic strength. Number two, an increase in dosage intensifies the effect as does potentially eating mushrooms on an empty stomach. Number three, the divine mushroom doesn't hinder one's mind, but it actually sharpens one's memory. Although it does utterly destroy your sense of time, as that first night for me felt like an entire lifetime had been lived. Now those facts lead us to a very peculiar chemical question. For what makes certain type of mushrooms? Magic. You see, my wife and I have discovered a lot since that walk in the woods 30 years ago. But what we discovered only opens up new vistas for further study. For now, Valentina and I are off on another expedition to the Mexican Indian village where we seek more knowledge of the divine magic mushroom. Hey, just wanted to say thanks for watching again. 
if you would like to read the real article that I published in Life Magazine, you can find that at the link below. Also, if you would like to hear the beautiful sounds of Maria without my voice over her, you can find that video right here. If you subscribe and hit that bell button, you'll be notified when the Shroom Boom puts out its next episode, which is a deep dive on the Shaman Maria herself. See you around. Mm-hmm.